In a previous video, I mentioned an easy way to measure the opposite sideband rejection of simple phasing or filter method SSB receivers. That used an Android mobile phone using a free app called Frequency. The method was easy and many people reported success. However, there are some disadvantages. You couldn't see the rejection as a spectrum. You had to test every frequency one at a time. In practice, that meant adjusting either your signal generator or your receiver under test every 100 hertz or so and writing down the result on a bit of paper. You'd then compare that as a ratio against your desired sideband to calculate the rejection. Here's another method of measuring rejection. It uses a little bit more equipment, but you probably have it at home. It allows you to view a whole spectrum of rejection rather than doing a test for each individual frequency. So, it's a lot more educational, especially if you're having to adjust audio phase shift networks. Even adjusting the RF phase shift can make a difference to the level of audio rejection you get at particular frequencies. What you see here is a complete test setup. A white noise generator, in this case an FM receiver tuned between a station, an SSB transceiver, it's got a dummy load attached, and the receiver under test. You might want to use a bigger speaker on the radio to guarantee a better low end response. The transmitter and receiver are on the same frequency and the correct sideband is selected. The level of signal coupling is such that the receiver is not overloaded by the signal from the transmitter. If it is, then use a better shielded dummy load or reduce the transmitter's power. Next, we'll apply some white noise. This test allows you to examine the characteristics of the crystal filter in your transceiver. That's particularly useful for homebrew ladder crystal filters such as used in this Noblis Wonder. You can see in this case the frequency response had a bit of a ripple in the middle and cut off the lows. However stations worked reported good punchy audio so I'll leave it as it is. Having checked out the crystal filter's response, let's have a look at opposite sideband rejection. Now we're transmitting on 7160 upper sideband. You're hearing my voice through the camera, but not through the receiver under test. Whereas if we go to lower sideband, the signal is heard through the receiver. That proves opposite sideband rejection. That's easy with a crystal filtered based rig, but harder with phasing equipment. So, we'll test that next. We've now got an 80 metre phasing receiver set up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're now transmitting a lower sideband signal on 3.6 MHz. The response again favours the top end of the audio range, but it's still good communications quality. Next is to flip between the sidebands. This is lower sideband, this is upper sideband, and you're not hearing much through the receiver. All the voice you're hearing is coming through the back of the camera. That compares with lower sideband, which produces a strong signal from the receiver. That indicates the receiver is rejecting the opposite sideband. But at what frequencies? Let's try some white noise. Applying some white noise. This is white noise on the desired lower sideband. You probably can't see the scale of the meter 
but it's around 20 or 30 dB down. Now go to upper sideband, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there is a signal there, but it's much lower. Now you have to be careful about audio feedback coming from the FM receiver, which should ideally be isolated from the phone. But you can tell that it's not significant because most of the audio, as you see on the phone, is coming from the receiver. The audio response here is minus 40 to 50 dB, showing there's around 20 dB or so of rejection. Well, we don't see the 800 Hz one. And we do a bit above 2 kHz. Although that's probably a good thing. Although it's probably a good thing to have a bit of audio tailoring to enable that response. As an example, watch the response on the screen as I tune the receiver off. One, two, one, two. Now, of course, down here, the signal is unintelligible because I'm on the opposite sideband, but it's significantly weaker than the desired sideband. These tests are crude and I wouldn't expect accurate results. However, the principles are sound. They can be useful in teaching the strengths and limitations of homebrew equipment. If you've got any sort of receiver, whether it be regenerative, direct conversion, SSB phasing or SSB filter, I'd recommend experiments like this. They're quick to do and can be done with equipment found in most ham shacks.